The Pimax Crystal is potentially one of the best headsets available on the market today. However, how did it stack up when I got my hands on one? In this video, I'll go over what it is like to get hold of a Pimax Crystal now, and whether Pimax have ironed out some of the issues that have previously been reported. I must say that I did manage to get a discount on the Pimax Crystal, as long as I completed a review, which I always intended to do anyway. But this review contains my own honest opinions, and the negatives and positives as always. When I purchased it from the Pimax website, I got good tracking and information sent by email, and it was shipped from within the UK and was handled by Amazon, meaning I had it in just two days after ordering. You will, however, get an email asking you to reconfirm your address, which could delay delivery if you don't keep an eye out for that email and respond quickly. So be aware of that. I can understand why it's important to ensure the address is correct. However, as you enter it when purchasing, this does seem a bit odd. On a plus note, I did automatically get an email from the support site where an account had automatically been set up for me. This makes things a bit easier should you need help along the way. Getting a headset such as this at such a high price gives you a real expectation or hope of quality and anticipation. And in my case, during the unboxing, it did feel like you were getting something unique and high end. It comes well packaged and I didn't have any signs of damage, marks on it or anything else like that to report. In the box, you get the headset, controllers, two batteries and the charging dock the display port cable and USB cables, the USB-C charging cables for the controllers and batteries, and you should receive the power and connection hub. I, however, only received the cables for the power and connection hub, but not the hub itself. The hub is needed to provide additional power to the headset, which a USB port on its own cannot provide, unless you have additional power being provided through something like the hub. This left me with concerns as to whether I could even use the headset. I also purchased the DMAS headphones, which were easy to install by simply peeling back the foam and unscrewing the stock audio with just one screw, and screwing the DMAS audio in their place. The stock sound is quite basic, but with the DMAS audio, it is a very good standard and I would highly recommend considering it to really increase the overall experience of the Pimax Crystal. It is odd that they're blue, but I think this is due to the legacy of previous headsets and they haven't updated them specific to the Pimax Crystal. When starting to set up the headset, I have previously had an 8KX, so I had an awareness of some of the issues that can be experienced with the Pimax software and connections. First of all, I installed the Pimax Play software. Next, I decided to connect the headset up with the USB hub connections being plugged into a powered USB hub that I already had, in the hope that it would work with Pimax's own one. And I connected the DisplayPort cable into my fourth port on my graphics card, with the other three occupied by monitor connections. I secured the other end of the cable into the headset and made sure the battery was installed. Now for those who already have experience with the Pimax Crystal, you may have noticed an error on my part, but the Pimax Crystal will not connect or work if you have three monitors connected. This took me some time to figure out, but luckily not too long. Long, so it is just worth being aware that you can only have two monitors connected at the same time. Once the monitor situation was rectified and the crystal turned on, it was identified straight away in the Pimax software and I began completing the headset firmware update, which took several minutes, but completed successfully without any issues. I then went to calibrate the eye tracking, which I completed in the headset successfully and then exited it in the Pimax crystal. Although the eye tracking calibration software on my PC then crashed, I closed the program and tested that the calibration had worked successfully, which it had. I then had to do a control update, but this was relatively quick and was completed without any issues. I was keen to get into the Steam VR and see the displays myself, so I did a quick cursory check of the settings in Pimax Play, did the room setup and launched Steam VR. Now from this point, I have to say that the following issues I had were not necessarily Pimax's fault, but again, it is worth me covering in case anyone else experiences it. So when I first went into Steam VR, I wasn't seeing the clarity that I had made be hopeful. I checked all the Steam settings to make sure the resolution and other elements were selected and running as I would have expected. From looking at FPS VR, I had a very low CPU and GPU usage, much lower than I expected at around 35%. When I went into Half-Life Alex, again the resolution seemed lower than the Quest 3 has felt for me. I played around with the various different settings in Steam VR and in the games I was trying trying different aliasing, options in the NVIDIA control panel, and the Pimax settings, but I was still sure that the picture quality was still worse than the Quest 3. I turned to Discord to see if there was something I was missing, and still couldn't find a solution. I ended up raising a support ticket with Pimax, which they asked for quite a bit of detail for on their online form, which could be relevant, but depending on your support request could be a bit frustrating, although might get you the correct or fuller support much quicker. I had pretty much been left disappointed, and frustrated at the experience so far. That was until day two, however. 
On day two of my Pimax crystal ownership, after a bit more searching, I found a Reddit post which suggested that if you have previously installed Windows Mixed Reality, then there could be a line of text within the SteamVR settings file, which can be found in your SteamVR config folder. The line of text sets a maximum recommended resolution of 3240 by 3240. I previously at one point did have the HP Reverb G2, and when I went looking, I did find that limit on my maximum recommended resolution. Once deleted, I went to try the crystal again, only to find it was incredibly clear and my GPU and CPU usage had shot up as I had expected. So again, if your crystal isn't as clear as you had hoped, it could be worth checking for this in your SteamVR config folder. And again, it is not necessarily a fault of Pimax's, but with the higher resolutions, this will definitely be impacted by that limit. The headset itself feels well made. It is heavy, However, straight out of the box, it is relatively well balanced. You have a foam contact pad at the back of the strap, an elastic and rubber top strap, and the full foam pad as the facial interface. When putting it on, I found that my face shape was slightly too thin, meaning it didn't make contact sufficiently at the sides of the facial interface, and this caused the headset to feel insecure and relatively wobbly. The stock facial foam is 11 millimeters thick, and Pimax do offer a 15 millimeter foam, which would help improve the contact at the sides. This was initially out of stock, but I've now ordered one and I'm waiting for it to arrive. Until then, I decided to take some scissors to an old spare facial interface foam I had for the Pico 4 AMVR facial interface. With two short sections, these velcroed each side underneath the Pimax foam and made a huge difference to the comfort. This now firmly fitted and became so comfortable that I stopped considering other options such as the Apache side-to-side -side top strap from Studio Form Creative. The headset for me now fits well. It's well balanced and feels secure whilst moving around. It is still a heavy headset, so you won't be able to get away from it feeling slightly sluggish during fast movements. Pimax now also offer their own side-to-side -side top strap for additional comfort, which although I don't think I need it, I will be trying out and reviewing. The headset for me had plenty of adjustment and the small contact pad at the back of the headset did feel sufficient once the facial interface was sorted for my slightly narrower face. There was little to no light leak, with the nose light blocker working well for me. The visuals are very good. There is a significant boost over headsets such as the Quest 3, or PC VR headsets such as the HP Reverb G2, or Pico Neo 3 Link, with everything being sharper, with less aliasing, therefore reducing the shimmer or potential pixelation. The colours are pretty good, with good contrast, and with local dimming you are getting darker black levels. The visuals aren't perfect though, as there are some issues. There is quite bad chromatic aberration. In Project Cars 2, when you're just about to start a race, with the grid lineup menu open, you can see a significant split in colour at the edges of the menu, so you can see a clear red and yellow band which shouldn't be there. This chromatic aberration, although still there, luckily is less noticeable the close to the centre of the image you go, and whilst actually gaming or racing, it can become more difficult to see. This should be addressed, however, as I understand it, and from what Josh from Pimax has indicated, Pimax have some other priorities that they need to focus on such as wireless PC VR, which could put chromatic aberration lower down on the list. The lenses are aspheric lenses. Pimax, however, didn't release the headset initially with glass lenses, although I can now thankfully say that they do. With a glass lens, you are able to get more of the light through, and aspheric lenses can get more of the light and color through than pancake lenses as seen in the Quest 3, Quest Pro, or Pico 4. I found there is slightly less glare in the Pimax Crystal's lenses, which is a plus when compared to pancake lenses. However, I would say that the sweet spot is quite small. When you have the headset on, if you move its position even slightly, you will see the image bend and distort. This is less noticeable when you are gaming and the headset is fixed in place. But if you have straight lines in your game in menus or other images, then this sweet spot and movement out of it can be noticeable. The edge to edge clarity is okay, but there is blurring towards the edges, so it cannot compete with the edge to edge clarity of the Quest 3 or Quest Pro. The field of view is lower than advertised at around 102 degrees. For me, both vertically and horizontally, which is disappointing for such a big headset, and is probably around the acceptable minimum FOV now in VR. The diagonal FOV is probably slightly more than other headsets, as I find that the Pimax headsets have a slightly more rectangular view than binocular. Sometimes the glass lenses can tend to fog up, and can take a while to warm up, which can be really frustrating. There aren't any fans present on the headset which can move air around the lenses and facial interface, so it's 
this doesn't help with preventing condensation on the lenses. Despite the chromatic aberration, the sweet spot and edge to edge clarity of the lenses, when gaming and racing or flight sims especially, the image quality I find is so good in the majority of your vision that it gives an exceptional experience and transfers a racing sim from feeling like a game to that point where your mind can actually start to be fooled by how detailed and more realistic the quality is. The controllers are the standard format being accepted by VR in relation to button, grip and trigger placement. They feel basic with no texture on the surface of the grip of the controller, which would have helped make them feel slightly less cheap. There is however quite a nice matte effect texture on the face surrounding the buttons. They have a tracking ring and from my own testing I found the tracking to be an acceptable standard. They have batteries housed inside which are rechargeable with the USB-C cable and have a good life which will extend past any potential gaming session. If you need longer and are desperate then you could always use a power bank with a USB-C cable to each controller. These can't complete with the likes of the Quest 2 where batteries can last a month or two but they are good enough. The batteries in the headset itself are a bit of an odd one with some people not particularly happy with them. They have a clip on each side to release them from the headset or the charging dock but if you try to do both clips at once you will likely find it very difficult so do one clip at a time and you'll be fine. Despite this I've never actually had to change the battery so far. The USB-C cable to the port on the right hand side of the headset when in use helps keep the battery maintained throughout gaming. The headset does allow you to hot swap the batteries but you only have a minute to do it so it's worth trying this out before needing to at a critical time mid game. The battery charging dock is basically the same part that comes attached to the headset and although it has a USB-C port for charging the dock feels like an odd and cheap way to do the design and doesn't feel premium. The display port cable can come as a fibre optic cable or as a standard copper one. To tell which is which the fibre optic cable will only have one USB connection and one display port connector whilst the copper one has two USB connectors and the display port connector. The Pimax team have also made users aware that from their tests connecting both USB cables can actually drain the battery faster. I personally find that for sim racing or flying a cable is fine but would prefer to switch to wireless even with reduced graphics for room scale games. This wireless option is not yet available for the crystal although videos have been released showing the Ygig adapter functioning so this might not be too long. For me Wi-Fi would still have been a good option and what I was hoping for even with reduced graphics as my play space is nowhere near my computer. There had been some hope that virtual desktop could have been ported to the Pimax crystal but as I currently understand it, this is not likely to happen. In terms of my experience with the cable connection, I have had an incredibly stable experience and have been able to connect the headset first time, every time with the Pimax Play software since the first time I got it working, so I have been pleasantly surprised. There are numerous reviews out there which detail difficulties with connecting. The difficult thing here is that there have been known issues with the Pimax connection hub, which I am not using as I don't have it yet, and there have been issues with the cable. As I mentioned earlier, there are other potential causes such as having three monitors but it would have been good to see those issues resolved for reviewers until they get a stable experience they can really see what was the cause, how to rectify it and whether it was a Pimax issue or another system problem. I would also say that although I did have some issues with the initial setup which were not the fault of Pimax, I am so glad I persevered. I have been reinvigorated about VR and especially sim racing and flying with such good visuals with the low latency that DisplayPort cable and true PC VR headset brings. The eye tracking has worked well for me and dynamic foveated rending has also worked in most of the titles I have tried and there is a community list of the benefits that can be seen and in which games. I will leave a link to the list in the description which also details the command line needed to launch Half-Life Alex with DFR. Performance boosts can vary but up to 20% is possible which is really beneficial whilst driving such a high resolution on current hardware. I found the automatic IPD adjustment and headset fitting placement guide also work quite well but can get annoying if you have to take the headset off and put it back on a few times. Motion smoothing I find to be okay especially at 120 frames per second when the ghosting caused by motion smoothing is more difficult to notice. As for running at these high refresh rates without motion smoothing I find that the resolution of the Pimax crystal is just too demanding on a 4090 so at most you might be likely to get to 90 frames per second but I am aiming for 72 frames per second and in a game such as Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 with some optimization with the Pimax XR and the OpenXR toolkit I tend to get around 50 
60 to 55 frames per second, which are delivered very smoothly. There is, however, some concern over the OpenXR toolkit, with a developer deciding they can no longer maintain it due to the significant workload and demand it was placing on them, alongside their daily work and home life. So this could mean in the not too distant future, optimization for OpenXR titles will not be possible and lower frame rates will be expected. There is another piece of software which could, however, be useful, which is called Alma Lenses Digital Lens OpenXR plugin. This software helps to fine tune the visual experience to give a clearer image with hopefully less chromatic aberration. This software, however, is destined to be turned off in January due to licensing, but Pimax have stated they are in discussion with the company, so hopefully something can be worked out. The standalone experience with Pimax is definitely not a reason to buy this headset. There are very few apps, and the image clarity, understandably with just the XR2 Snapdragon chip, is very limited. When Pimax first advertised the Pimax Crystal, they detailed how they will work with the developers and encourage them to port games across. So with how much time has passed, I do have concerns with how limited this store will remain. I anticipate I will be keeping my mode switch purely to PC VR for a long time, if not permanently. The overall PC VR experience should be why people consider this headset though. It is expensive, but when compared to other headsets with similar or high clarity like the Big Screen Beyond or Varsho Aero, the price, especially during the recent Black Friday offers, is about on par with the competition. Don't forget you don't have to buy base stations or the Lighthouse Track faceplate and base station track controllers if you don't want to. And you can even get the headset without controllers if you just intend to use it for racing and flight sims. When I now go back to the Quest 3 or other PC VR headsets, they now feel more pixelated or I now see more of the compression with the Quest 3 or similar devices, which makes me consider whether the extra cost of the crystal is worth it. And all I can say is that I still have the Pimax crystal and love the feeling of greater realism in a racing sim, which is even enhanced by having a heavier more helmet-like headset. I would say that, although you don't need a 4090, if you really want to make the most out of the resolution and displays in sim racing or flying, you really do need a powerful GPU. Although it isn't perfect, when immersed in a race or game, the benefits heavily outweigh the negatives for me and provide the experience I've been hoping for. Can I recommend it though? Well, if you identify flaws and they bug you, then no. If you want a guaranteed plug and play experience, then from my own point of view and experience, you can mostly rely on it now, but there is still some doubt on what is causing the issues for other reviewers, so it is a potential risk, but it is one I am glad I took. With a high price, this is still an enthusiast headset, and to make the most of it, some tinkering, although not essential, may be needed. But in the end, it is great for the clarity it brings. I hope this has been useful, and once again, thanks for watching.